Hey everyone, I hope you're well. We are going to delve into all of the legends in this video and create a tier list talking about who I rank the highest in terms of their overall engagement rates. This is kind of talking a little bit about ranked, but mostly it's talking about unranked, their engagement potential, their overall skills, their movement, their hitbox, their abilities. We're gonna start from the very bottom from C and work our way up to S. Now this video is sponsored by myself. I've got some merch, you might wanna check it out. There's a link in the description. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna be pretty light with the editing here and just kind of have a bit of a conversational approach. So we'll start with C. We have Rampart first. Now last time I put Rampart in D class and I think that she got a pretty good buff this season. Now the main buff is the fact that you can literally just put your walls down pretty much anywhere, any angle. You can jump up and whilst in midair, place your walls. This is a really good buff. And it's really just a bug fix. It was broken in season seven and it was a big problem. It's fixed now. Her walls also have 45 health, but it doesn't really feel like that much. Honestly, I think they could buff it more. Her turret now has more range on it in terms of how much you can rotate it. A nice change. And I am seeing myself doing pretty well with the turret, especially late game to either farm damage to get my Evo shield up or when the ring's coming in and we're playing ranked. It's worked off worked out pretty well for me. I would say that she still needs a lot of buffs. The thing is, is that most of her kit really relies around her tactical. Her ultimate is very situational. There are many games where there's just no point in me putting it down because it's just more effective for me to just shoot people and move and stay on the move than to put down my turret, get on the turret, aim down sights. All of the animations involved just take too long. She has a very situational ult, a very situational passive, although with a Spitfire buff, that's Kind of nice, you know, that's pretty nice this season, but still pretty situational. So she's a very situational character and I do main her myself, but she definitely needs a lot of love still. And I think that pretty much every other legend in the game is better than her. Next, we have Revenant. Now Revenant is an interesting legend and he can be really good if you time your ultimate right and you're well coordinated with your team. But besides that, he's just really situational as well. He has that one alt push which can be really, really, really good. It really can. Revenant could, with enough buffs, be S tier without a doubt and he could dominate the meta and in maybe like season five, I think, he almost did dominate the meta for a bit but was kind of just shunned away to the side. We don't really see him competitive that much anymore but um, the main thing is his, his own solo capabilities aren't that great. I mean, his tactical is Okay, you can silence people, pretty useful, not gonna lie. But to me, the passive is pretty useless. He's very big, he deserves fortified in my opinion. And overall, I just feel like his kit fails to provide enough utility to him and also enough utility to his team when you're not coordinating with your team. Like if you're in a free stack, you're coordinating, you're in Discord or whatever, then it's easier to do that with Revenant. But you know, even then you need good timing and coordination with your actual squad mates. Um, so Revenant's really good if you have the coordination to do it. So I think you need some more love on a personal level to be pushed up. Now, next we have Mirage. And I will say the Mirage footstep buff where his decoys here uh, make footstep noises was actually a huge, huge improvement. It's actually really easy to get bamboozled now. And I think that he is actually a pretty decent legend. And if you mained Mirage, you could do really, really well with him. Not only does he go invisible when you heal or uh, rev revive your teammates or respawn them, but he also can use his ult, completely fool people. The footsteps on the decoys can completely fool people. A good Mirage player is scary, and I do think that you could play Mirage, solo him, get really good with him, and be a very difficult player to play against. But he just lacks that utility in fights a lot of the time. I mean, he can throw his ultimate, cause chaos, which is, you know, it's okay, but it doesn't really provide much utility in the fight. He doesn't have any engagement abilities to engage with the team. He's good at cleaning up after the fight, right? The invisibility thing's pretty good, but um, yeah, I, I just, it doesn't quite hit the ceiling in terms of, or break through the ceiling in terms of him being a competitive legend. It's a lot of fun. You can create some great moments, but he's still C tier personally for me. So that's it. That's C class all out of the way. Next, we have B class. Up first, we have Bangalore. B for Bangalore, right? 
I would rank Bengal higher. Um, I think that she is a really, really good solid legend. She's actually really great. I think her ultimate has really great positioning power. If you stun someone with her ultimate rockets, they slow people for a long time. Their vision is blurred. The smokes are really useful as well. Her passive is incredible in close range engagements or just disengaging too. She has a really good kit, and I think that's why she hasn't been buffed for such a long time, because, well, she just has a well-rounded kit that's really good. So why have I put her in B-Class? Well, the thing is, while she does have a really good kit, pretty much every legend in A and S tier are just that much better in terms of either what they provide to themselves as, like, a selfish ability, or what they provide to the team, or, in most cases, what they do for both themselves and their team. Bangalore... It's really great, honestly, but she doesn't quite compete with other legends like Horizon, Wraith, Gibraltar, Caustic, Lifeline for their overall team player utility and the way their abilities kind of really pivot a fight. So that's why Bangalore is B. And that's kind of the same reason why Loba is B. Loba can have a really good power spike at the early game because you can put down your ult, get the gear you need, and you're good to go straight into battle. And this ult will constantly provide you with ammo and items all through the game, which is really, really great. Um, it's actually a really helpful ability. But actually, in fights, in engagements, Loba does nothing. Her tactical is completely broken. You try and throw it around. Sometimes you don't even teleport. It's really unreliable as an ability. I think that they need to really think about changing that in some way because it's buggy. It's really, really buggy. Her passive is pretty good as well. So yeah, she's great. She's a crutch to lean on when you struggle to get loot, but that's it. She isn't anything else. What does she provide to the team in a fight? Not really anything. So that's kind of where it counts the most, right? And that's why she's not any higher. Now, the final legend in B is Fuse. Now, I'm gonna put Fuse in B class because I'm a little bit reserved to put him any higher at this point. I've seen a lot of crazy things happen with Fuse, especially when paired with, say, a Horizon ult or a Caustic ult, or just throwing a bunch of grenades in buildings. It can be pretty dangerous, I'm not gonna lie. But the fact that this nade spam is happening, like, it could still happen. You could still have nade spam happening he just does it a little bit more effectively, for sure. He can carry more grenades, so it happens more often. But I I just, I don't know. He's got this explosive kit that can do a lot of damage, but sometimes it just falls short. The ultimate's a little strange. There seems to be a delay when you throw it down on the ground. People can walk through the fire for the first couple of seconds and only take five damage. So whilst it does stun them, it kind of like defeats the point of using it sometimes, especially because when you throw it down, you can hardly see through the f flames. Um, I think that Fuse should have an ability where he can see enemies' outlines through the flames because you throw it on the end circle, for example, and players who may have digi threats on the other side are going to win the fight because you can't see anything. They can see you through the flames, but you can't see them, and it's a big, big problem. Fuse's passive is a lot of fun. His tactical is pretty good at times. It doesn't do a massive amount of damage, but for a tactical, it's pretty decent. I'd say it's just, it's too early to say. It's really early. I could potentially see Fuse being A tier. He's definitely not C tier, but for now I'm going to put him B tier because I'm pretty reserved. I don't see him being more effective as a legend than Bangalore. See, this is kind of the competition we're going up against. The legend meta is pretty good right now, so we're seeing a lot of well-balanced legends and powerful legends um, all across the board. So next we have A tier. We're going to start at the bottom of A tier, and that is Watson. Now, Watson's a strange one. Watson's pretty boring to play, but you can't deny that she does wonders for the team with her abilities at late game if you want to commit to that playstyle. You have to commit to the playstyle of being ready to camp somewhere or set up somewhere and be ready. Um, so it's pretty interesting. You can kind of use her ultimate reactively as well in a lot of situations to stop nade spams, which is obviously going to kind of help deal with the huge amount of fuse players at the moment for sure. Overall, she's just a really good legend that's going to help you secure wins really effectively without a doubt. Her solo kit is also really good as well. You can quickly reactively place down fences, fences stop people pushing you. It's really, really powerful in my opinion. And she has a really good animation set and a small hitbox is really hard to hit. She has, she's in the top five for 1v1 engagements, right? Amongst Wraith, Octane, Horizon, uh, I think the other legend is Lifeline. Five of these legends all have movement-based abilities or small hitboxes. 
Watson doesn't have any movement based abilities, so she can you can tell that she does well in these one v one engagements because of her hitbox and animations, and that is why to me she's a dark horse for perhaps one of the best movement legends in the game. She has no movement based abilities, but her overall animation set if you're good at strafing and and crouch strafing and just abusing the movement in this game watson is up there i would say watson is alongside both wraith and lifeline maybe higher a little bit i don't know that's why she's a tier to me she's a really strong legend she's just boring to play that kind of brings me to crypto as well because crypto has some good animations too his strafing animations are actually really good so if you master Movement again, the base movement mechanics, you'll do really well with crypto without even touching your abilities. And that's the thing, you may not really touch your abilities if you're playing pubs and unranked that often. Um, because you kind of have to get into your drone and be active in accessing the drone, which you know you give up your own control of your player. I'd always love to see a buff for crypto where he can actually have his drone auto scan the area or something, but Crypto's ability kit itself is actually really strong. The drone allows you to quickly see who's in the area. You can scan the beacon from afar very easy. You can respawn people really effectively from afar. The EMP is a great engagement tool. I would actually say Crypto is closer towards A+, actually. It's just, once again, kind of like Revenant, you need to be coordinated with your team to pull off a good ult because it does stun your teammates and it has a certain range to it. So. You can be really good with crypto, but he has quite a high skill ceiling. I think it takes a lot to be a good crypto player and a lot of good teamwork to pull it off in a team. So that's why he's A and not any higher. He's a very good legend. Very, very good. But yeah, he's not S tier yet. <laughs> Next we have Pathfinder in A tier. Ultimately, Pathfinder's mobility is still really good. Yes, we have Horizon now. Yes, we have the Octane Jump Pad now. And that's why both of those legends, in my opinion, are ranked higher than Pathfinder. But Pathfinder's grapple still allows you to get away very fast, a lot of distance if you're good with the grapple. Personally, I think it's just a really good ability. And I think it's always going to be that way because of the freedom of movement that it offers. The zipline can be good for disengaging and engaging at times as well. And his passive is kind of a shame, but the recon passive is also really good. Overall, a really good legend. Hopefully low profile will be gone from him soon, which is really, really needed. He always has the potential to be S tier, honestly. It's just hitbox problems mixed with the fact that other legends are kind of taking his sort of play style, his, his identity with the recon legends taking his passive is kind of a big problem. He needs a rework for sure. But still really good all around. Next we have Bloodhound. Now Bloodhound is a really powerful legend for providing utility to your team. I'd say if you're playing ranked and you want to provide benefit to your team, but you're not very good at communicating or you're worried that you're going to come across people who don't have mics or don't communicate or speak a different language, Bloodhound is the legend for you because Bloodhound provides information to the team very visually constantly through their scans and their passive ability it's such a powerful ability all the way from the beginning to the end stages of the game bloodhound's ultimate is incredible for constant stat scans and pressuring the enemies it's a really powerful ability thanks to the movement you can quickly see enemies thanks to the outline of players as well it's a really strong ability I would say if I were to do a ranked tier list, I'd put, I'd put Bloodhound in S. I'd definitely put Bloodhound in S. Bloodhound is really good without a doubt. Next we have A+. First up, Caustic. Caustic is just really annoying to fight against. And if he's really annoying to fight against, that means he's good. The fact that players can move in Caustic's gas now without any problems is a huge problem for when you're fighting against the Caustic team that know how to play around the gas. It's still annoying to be in the gas as a Caustic teammate. So it is a bit of a problem, but if you know how to play around it, and you work together as a squad, you are just going to be so annoying. Caustic wins the majority of late games as well, so he's always going to do well if you can get to that point. Out in the open, he's kind of caught out a bit, but, you know, with some good core movement mechanics and good positioning, it's not such a problem. Caustic's ultimate is so frustrating to play against. His gas traps have been nerfed a little bit, so you can shoot them whilst they're deploying, but overall, he's still really strong in my opinion. He's still such a bully when you just constantly put pressure on people with the gas. 
I think he's A plus tier. There are some areas where he kind of falls flat because he is big and he doesn't have mobility, but I think the power that his abilities have are so strong that it, it really does make him A plus. And if it was just damage dealing, right, his abilities were only damage dealing or even only damage dealing and stuns, slows, then it wouldn't be so bad. But the fact that it basically blinds you it's damage dealing and it slows you and ticks damage over time. It's just too much. It makes him really, really strong, in my opinion. Uh, next, we have Lifeline. Now, Lifeline's kit's a bit strange. Her ultimate isn't really that great. Her passive is incredible, though. Her passive is incredible, and everything relies around her passive. You can literally win fights with her passive constantly. You're gonna be able to constantly get your team up, play around the shield, get your team up in situations that you should never be allowed to do. And it's gonna win your team fights. It's gonna win your team games. It's gonna keep you alive, especially in rank. This is more important, but overall, if you have a bad teammate, you literally can use that to your advantage by just constantly tapping the shield and playing around it like you're playing around a Gibby Dome. It's incredibly strong. And I think that they're going to shift some of that power away from her passive and put it into her other abilities in the future. We may see a significant drop in her rating, in my opinion. So for now, she's really strong because she's just annoying to play against, you know? You know how it is when you shoot down a team and then the lifeline just reses them all and you're like, well, there's my RP gone. There's my, there's my kills gone. I'm not going to get them anymore. And that team's going to be up and in my face any second. So really, really strong legend. Now, A+. Plus, is Octane. Octane jumped from C tier to A+. plus. Now, how did he jump up so high? Well, with his boosted jump pad, of course. The distance that you can get and the speed you can get when you slide over the jump pad is incredible now. It's a really powerful disengage tool, repositioning tool that Octane needed from the beginning. He was also always such a solo focused legend. Players would play aggressive with him, but now you can use it to reposition very effectively, very freely, get out of situations. And that's what he needed from the beginning. The increased height on it when you just walk over, it's really great as well. Pair that with the tactical, which also starts to get your health healed faster now, thanks to the improved passive back in like season six, I think. Octane's a really good legend. He's a really good repositioning legend without a doubt. And I think that we're gonna see a lot more Octanes in high level play, I really do. Now we have S tier. First up is Gibraltar. Well, firstly, he's a tank. He's just a tank. He's a massive tank and it's so hard to fight against him when you 1v1 him. His 1v1s are gonna be so great because, well, he has more health. If you're a good Gibby, you are gonna dominate people. He's big, but you have to use that cover around you to really put him to his full potential. I've also noticed that there's a bit more long range fighting going on and once again, Gibby basically gets free peaks because of his gun shield long range, so really goes in his favor. You can also reposition very well out in the open. You throw your dome between where you are and the position you want to go. You have free cover, really, really powerful kit. It's kind of a free revive at times as well. Long range it is. Um, it's not as good as Lifeline's revive, but still really good. Overall, Gibby just has too much to offer. I haven't even talked about his ultimate yet. Gibraltar's ultimate is also really powerful, especially late game. Um, the amount of pressure it provides, which allows you to reposition or push up on a squad or just deal damage on players who are trying to heal or escape, is really amazing. Just everything about Gibraltar is really great. He is big, but you can learn to play around that. Of course, you have the gun shield to kind of negate that a little bit. Now next we have Wraith. Wraith is still S tier. Now she had a big nerf with her hitbox and it's definitely made a big impact, but ultimately her abilities are still really great. She has a free repositioning tool where she's invincible and you can move really fast whilst using it. Her ultimate is also a free invincible repositioning tool for your whole team. Yes, it has reduced distance now, much more reduced distance than in the past, but the fact that you can move somewhere without being shot is incredible. It's it's always going to be the way where we're going to see Wraiths on high level teams because it's her kit. It's not just the fact that she's really small and can win 1v1 so well because she's so small. Of course that matters, but it's her kit. So now she's a still relatively small legend with an amazing set of abilities. So it's no surprise. Finally, we have Horizon. Now Horizon got another nerf, but 
she still has really great movement based abilities she can still abuse her grav lift like crazy whether she's strafing on the top or using it to drop on people's heads she can throw her ult and completely just destroy a squad if you throw a good ult and it's not hard to do that with horizon like it is hard to do it with a caustic ult you're just gonna destroy squads you're gonna completely stop them from getting away and just turn a squad within seconds and with the third parties going on in king's canyon right now you need to be in and out as quick as possible and horizons out offers that quick burst to just throw all your, all, all your abilities in one spot as enemies are pulled into it really really strong legend so that's it that's my tier list for the season i may do another ranked tier list of course we have the weapons tier list do a bunch of other stuff so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think and i see you all in the comments cheerio